Hey, Rob here from uh, M3, M35A2 page. Uh, I had a few people ask me if I want to do a video on how to, uh, what I'm doing with this rear brake conversion. And uh, I'll give you a disclaimer right now. I'm not Steven Spielberg, nor am I Brad Pitt. So with that being said, uh, editing and acting on this is going to be not my best. So what we're looking at is I've already taken down the spindle and the uh, and the hub assembly the whole bit and it's down to pretty much down to a bare axle and the uh, brake backing plate and I'll spin the camera around here so you guys can see it so that's what we're looking at right now so in order to get these 12 rivets off I have center punched each one of them and I'm gonna use a 1 8 inch drill bit to run a little pilot hole and I'm only gonna go ahead and drill in to like get to the back end of the backing plate on the inboard side of the backing plate and then I'm gonna ramp it up to a 3 8 and uh, that way it'll have that the rivet head on this side on the outboard side of the, uh, the brake backing plate will be weakened enough you can take a cold chisel and with a big old hammer and just tick, whack them right off and uh, just cut them right off so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pause here for a second and uh, I'll show you a uh, I'll do one example and then I'm not gonna bore you with the rest of the 11 because it's just a repeat as necessary and uh, all right be right back all right so we've got our eighth inch hold pilot hold drilled already and uh, come back in a few seconds and I'll show you what that 3 8 looks like all right that's pretty much where you want it right there like I said it doesn't have to be exact as long as you get a lot of the uh, enough of the rivet head drilled out where you can easily just take a cold chisel and just chuff that right off. Alright guys, so this here is my weapon of choice right here. And we've got a uh, halfway decent hammer. I'm going to adjust that a little bit. Come a good wax with this thing, it'll come right off. Just like that. So, you just repeat that 11 more times. And, uh, like I said, I'm not going to bore you with the details on that because it's just basically what you just saw. And, uh, we'll be back in, in just a second. And, uh, for more entertainment. Alright guys, back with you again. So at this point, with everything being drilled out and chiseled off, you should look like something like this. Now I should have said before I went ahead and started drilling out that I did obviously remove the brake shoes for better clearance. And that um, it takes a half inch socket on the back side and I just use a crescent wrench for the, for the bolts that uh, the hold down fasteners that, for the shoes. Once you get those all loose and everything, it'll come right out and just peel it right off the backing plate um, the uh, it does have some horseshoe clips down below but those are just you can just knock those out with a couple of screwdrivers and a side by side and a hammer and just pops it right out and then uh, hose it down with some brake clean because it's going to be nasty in there and then you can start drilling out like we uh, like I showed you so at this point the, uh, the only thing left is on the back side here is the wheel cylinder which I've already taken off and it's got a adapter block that goes on the cylinder itself right there and that is a 7 16 and the banjo bolt that goes on the adapter is a 3 quarter so what I did is I just loosened up that banjo first took that block out bend it out of the way slightly put a screwdriver through it and then just loosen it up so we are ready to go so all I gotta do is just take your hammer and hopefully I can do this with one hand. It's gonna get loud in here. You know, that's gonna be way too loud. I'm gonna save you guys from that. We'll just, uh, we'll cut right here and then I'll just show you after. All right, so half the problem of uh, taking off that is you just need a bigger hammer. So, we upgraded couple swings knocked it right off so what you're gonna be looking at now is this 
Now, not all of these rivets you'll have to drill out and knock out. You can go ahead and keep some of them in place. Specifically, you're gonna to have to knock these two out because that's where your upper uh, mount plate is gonna go for your caliper. But these, all the way around till about your 6.30, 7 o'clock position. You can just grind those right down and uh, just leave them in place. They're not hurting anything. Now, the part that we have to cut out, and I don't know if it was just my kit in particular, but uh, the instructions for the back end on this really weren't the greatest. And uh, if I can take them out of here, I'll show you. Nope, they're on wrong packet. They're down below. All right, so this is the whole instruction book that I got from Voice. And you got to go ahead and put on your, your thinking cap and your private eye hat because this is what you get. Well, at least this is what I got. Maybe they've improved them from there or they just forgot to put in in, in any case. So this is what you get. You get a picture of what the axle tube is supposed to look like. Now this is gonna be, uh, their cutout is gonna be on the driver's side. I'm doing the passenger side, so I'm gonna be doing the mirror image of this. And that is a big chunk of metal you've got to cut out of this. And here is another shot. This is the picture number two of what I got. And then the third picture is the super single conversion on a bobbed deuce with everything assembled and not even in color. So you have to really study this picture to find out exactly what you got to do, what side that caliper mount bracket goes on. You can see it goes to the inboard side and you kind of have to go from there. Uh, just kind of looking at stuff, seeing how it fits on. It, uh, it took me a while to, to really figure this out before I just dive right in and start cutting up stuff. And then the last picture they give you is this one right here. So, going on with this, uh, a lot of trial and error on that first one that I did. Um, cut a little bit, measure twice, cut once, measure it again, trim a little bit more. Uh, learning curve definitely so <clears throat> what we're gonna have to do on this particular career if I can find my sharpie well I can't find my sharpie but we'll just point it out with a screwdriver we're gonna have to go yeah let's see let me flip you around hold on all right we're gonna have to go and make a vertical cut just behind this this rivet right here this is one of the two that we're going to have to knock out on the top so we're going to make a slice all the way down to this flange right here and then we're going to go all the way down to this and we're going to cut again just below that one rivet right there so all this material gone so what i've had to do is i just had a uh, attention what you camera rob vertical cut here vertical cut here and with my my cutoff wheel just went all the way around and went about probably about halfway through and then just hit it with a hammer to go ahead and fracture it and it just cut right it just snapped right off then you can go in with a grinder and grind this down now the thing that i had also had to learn when i was doing test fitting on this is that there is a ridge on the inside of here that is lower that is lower than the outside this you have to grind down to this this surface right here all the way around not the entire distance all the way around but just where that caliper bracket is going to go uh, because when you get your caliper mount, you're going to have to go from right about here and slowly grind away down all the way around till about here. So 
you can leave it as it is up here if you wanted to, but you really have to get down into the material on this face of the axle to grind it down to get a proper fit. And that's going to be a lot of grinding, a lot of cutting, and uh, it's loud. Make sure, guys, make sure you wear all your eyes and ears. You only get one set. So uh, I will be back after we go ahead and get that done. Uh, but anyway, to get the, the rivets out, you drop down to a 5 16 drill. And you drill about halfway through, and then you just take a center punch and a big hammer, and these rivets just come, pop right out. Bing, bang, Bob's your uncle. Um, hopefully you guys can go ahead and take my advice what I've been doing this is how I've been doing it the way I've been in the first one lots of trial and error uh, this seems to be about the easiest way to get all this stuff out uh, as far as uh, so far on the, on the on the rear axles front axles it's gonna be a learning curve again but uh, that's gonna be another video if you guys need it but uh, next segment is gonna be everything's gonna be all cut off and trimmed on this flange and then, uh, hey guys, uh, everything's going to be trimmed off on this flange and uh, ground down. And then I'll show you how that uh, caliper bracket mounts up and we'll do a test fit. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, catch you guys later. All right, so after about 1,600 air compressor cycles and uh, a couple of cutting wheel changes out and probably about 2,600 hours of grinding it seems like uh, we've got this and I've already mocked it up a little bit here for you ta-da all right so previous previous part just a few minutes ago for you probably about an hour and a half for me is that we snipped it just behind here and I probably went a little bit too far up probably could have gone down to about here but you know no harm no foul um, just to get clearance for this caliper bracket right here and that's actually pretty close but there is a little bit of a gap in there and down here I was right on the money as far as it, where that notch is so if you guys want to go and take this one step at a time uh, put the bracket on and then your caliper mount bracket and then just mark with a sharpie where your indents have got to go and then just grind out from there flat um, that's more than likely what I'm going to do on the front axle. Lessons learned. Uh, again, you know, it's minor, no harm, no foul. And you can see on this side that those rivets ground down real nice. And uh, this is just a mock-up right now. Uh, this is going to get painted 383 green as well as the caliper. I'm sorry, no, black. Black. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll get that painted up so it's all subdued and everything. So it's all... Sh sh hush hush you have to really get up on it and the other thing I learned that these are 7 8 inch bolts and these holes were not so you gotta go ahead and open them up to 7 8 uh, that was a trip to the hardware store yesterday because all the drill bits that I had uh, probably wouldn't even cut warm butter in the Sahara and they're now in the scrap bucket because I just got sick of them so anyway there's that and then uh, Again, referencing Tactical Repair, uh, he's got a hell of a channel out there. Uh, go ahead and uh, please look up his videos as far as how to do uh, hub service on these trucks. Uh, he gets really in, uh, in depth with what you should do, uh, what he's learned. And uh, on this particular wheel right here, there is a, uh, you'll, you'll see it in, in his video, there's a piece of cork that's supposed to go in this notch right about here underneath the bearing and that's to keep the, the uh, differential oil that comes up through your axle from going up here and contaminating your grease uh, in your bearings and uh, that uh, that cork was not there on this axle so my bearings were, were a little washed out with uh, differential fluid uh, but they are okay I'm just gonna go ahead and repack them and uh, definitely seal it up the proper way to get that done but uh, that's how it's that's how it's going for me on this and uh, oh yeah I also made up a bracket 
because there is no brackets that come with a kit. So I just took a piece of uh, scrap steel. Like I said, I'm, <laughs> I'm, no, I'm no Steven Spielberg. So just bit, took a piece of flat steel, uh, 7 8 hole for your mount because it's going to go on the, let's see, the forward bolt. It's not in because it's just mocked up, but it's going to go in here like so. And then the brake hose is going to go up through and mount through here. And then with a horseshoe clamp, just like you'd find on an old school Ford or Chevy or whatever. And then uh, we're just going to mount that hose, this uh, brake line coming from the front, the stock one. And uh, yeah, it'll it'll be done. It'll just be like the, uh, the other side here. I've, I've actually got another bracket all mocked up on the other side here. I'll show you guys real quick and then we'll go ahead and I'll shut this video down. And going into the editing room so it's all nice and one one piece see that's how I, I mocked it up just form fit and function nothing fancy that'll hold keep this from flopping around because you don't want to definitely don't want to fracture your hard line going down the road but uh, that's how I'm doing this kit and the uh, if you're asking about torque values uh, I have a chart that I got from my work that uh, shows the torque values for each different types of uh, bolts and nuts and stuff like that. That's what I'm using. The bolts that go onto the hub where you bolt your uh, disc brake onto, uh, judging by the hardware that's on the truck already, it's grade 8. So I'm stepping that up a little bit with two uh, 65 foot pounds, threw in some red Loctite. Just so I can go ahead and make myself angry at myself later on if I have to change out that disc on this. And the uh, other bolts for the uh, caliper mount bracket, got those down to 45. And I think the same for the. Uh, no, no, it wasn't. It was 30, 30 foot pounds. 30 foot pounds for the two big bolts for the, uh, cal the stock caliper bracket to the adapter bracket. And the uh, the axle the axle bolts are gonna just be you know whatever your TM is gonna say. I can't remember off the top of my head. I've been out here all day. I'm a little tired. And I'm a little hungry. So I'm gonna end this video right now. Thanks guys. I appreciate you want me to go and do a video. First one I've ever done, as you can tell. So uh, take care. I hope it was informative. Uh, if there's anything I forgot, you guys have any questions. Uh, feel free to uh, just send me a, a message, short little text through uh, Messenger on Facebook here, and uh, I'll try to answer it the best I can. If I can't answer it, I'll kick you in the right direction at least. And uh, have a good day. And try to keep these guys running. Take care. Bye. Hey, guys. A couple edits to my video. Uh, I gave out some non-factual information. Um, previous segment there uh, it's been a couple days since I worked on it uh, schedule work um, anyway I the bolts that I told you that we're gonna go through here on this upper part right here I told you I had to go ahead and those are gonna be a 7 8 uh, that was grossly incorrect uh, those are 7 16 just a shade over 3 8 of what comes out of the factory. Um, as you can see, I've painted this green. And also, when I was referencing about grinding out on the rivets, you only have to do these four right here on the forward edge. Um, the bottom two, you need to go ahead and leave open because that's where the uh, that's where the bottom adapter bracket goes. Those also get um, drilled out, opened up to 7 16 Not 7 8 Rob, 7 16 big difference. Uh, so I'm, I apologize for that, and I will put this on the uh, the tail end of all of my all the videos here. And uh, yeah, just reviewing them before I go ahead and splice them all together for you guys. And uh, that's what I saw. So my apologies on that. Uh, I blame tiredness and hunger. Yeah. So it, uh, yeah, it's going to go together pretty good. I'm going to try to do a little bit before I have to go to work. And. Uh, Again, hopefully you find this video informative. Again, if you have any questions for me, please 
uh, shoot me a message through uh, Messenger on Facebook and uh, try to answer them the best I can. And uh, take care, guys. And I got to get going. I'm burning daylight. Take care.